Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today we're stretching a stencil. If you take a stencil and use it just the way it is, you get something this size. But how can you make this stencil this tall? Well, you're going to see that in this video. You're also going to see the thing that mildly freaked me out around the middle of the page. I've got an art journal background here that I made some time ago, and I want to put in this orange area here some castles. I want some skinny, tall castles, except the mask that I've got, it's kind of short. It's not going to fill that whole area, but I want it to. And guess what? There's a way to stretch this stencil so it fills that entire area. I'm going to get the mask positioned where I want it. And that's one of the reasons I adore working with masks is you can see where it's going to go before you make any kind of commitment. So I can get it positioned where I want it. I know where the tops of my towers are going to be. And now I'm going to bring in some paint. Now, before I actually commit there, I'm going to test this blue to make sure it's actually the same blue that I used on the other part of the page. And yep, it is. As I start to stencil the towers, you'll notice that I'm being somewhat careful about this. It's like I'm only stenciling on some of the towers, and that is extremely true. I'm only doing the three in the middle. You see, that's the thing about stencils. You don't have to use all of it. You can pick and choose whatever parts you want. And because I'm picking and choosing here, you're going to see how that's going to change the look of this in just a moment. Now, once I've got this first layer of paint on here, I'm going to lift up the mask, and then what I'm going to do is reposition it. I'm basically just sliding that mask down a little bit so that it lengthens those three towers that I have. And then that's the trick for taking this stencil and stretching it, is you're just going to be stenciling parts of it each time. So for those three in the middle, I'm only going to be stenciling some more straight parts for it. The very pointy parts on those, I'm not going to do. But guess what? On the ones around it, the one on each side, I'm going to put the tops on those. And that's how I'm going to create towers that are of different heights here to fill in this art journal page. And spoiler alert, I'm going to be doing some other tops of towers on here. So I need to think about that as I'm doing this. I want to make sure that I'm only putting the blue on the current towers that I'm working with. That way, when I slide it down and do the next one, I'll be able to get the points on those towers. So to protect some of this area, what I'm doing is bringing in the ever fancy, the ever useful post-it note to mask off part of it. And that way I can get the blue over there and finish up that tower. But I also have some orange left over there so that I can get a top of another tower underneath. Once I've got the blue on there, and then I'm going to remove my post-it notes. I'm going to lift up my mask and then I'm going to slide it down. But I don't have to slide everything down perfectly in the same way. You'll notice the blue on that tower on the right. That's the paint that's basically saying that was the blue that I just did. And now I've shifted the towers over one. Is that fair? Is that possible? Is it legitimate? Well, as long as all the tower parts, the straight parts line up, you can use different parts for different ones. And so what this is going to do is change up the windows within some of the towers. But here's the thing, you'll notice that I'm pausing and that's because this is the point where I actually realized, oh, I didn't actually get it lined up the way I expected. This is absolutely an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. And it turns out that I actually like having that variety in there more than the way that I was planning to do it, which was keeping all of the castle towers exactly the same as they went from the top of the tower all the way down to the bottom. If you want to be able to line things up exactly the way they were and you're not sure which ones you had, a lot of times by going up to the very top of the towers, it's a little bit easier to line things up and then you can slide it straight down. Now I keep lifting up the mask so that you can see what it looks like underneath there. But if I was doing this and the camera wasn't on, I probably wouldn't be lifting the mask up. I would simply be sliding it down and that will also keep everything automatically lined up for you. But I wanted you to be able to see what was underneath there after each and every layer was added. I'm an impatient stenciler, so there are two things that I'm doing right now that are helping me keep nice crisp lines for the stencils and get all the details in here. First thing is I'm using a heavy body paint and that's the fancy way of saying it's really thick. And it probably won't surprise you that thicker paint has a harder time running underneath a stencil. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a cosmetic sponge in that up and down motion. If I go in more of an up and down motion, less is likely to run underneath it. I thought about stopping at this point because I really liked how that looked, 
But then I thought, nah, I'm gonna go all the way with this. I'm gonna take it all the way down to the orange so that I have an irregular sort of rocky cliff kind of look for these castle towers. Stencils are also great for doing irregular shapes because you can see what's going on underneath them. So when I go down to the next layer, you're gonna see some of it with orange. So I'm not gonna stencil over the whole thing. I'm only gonna do it on top of where the orange is. And I'm just gonna repeat that until the whole area is filled in. Oh, I got so excited about sharing this idea with you. I completely forgot to mention that this stencil is part of the Once Upon a Time stencil and mask set that I designed for over at Stencil Girl Products. So you get not just this one, but five other masks to go with it, matching larger towers, and then a stencil for the larger towers. Once I've got the tower stenciled on here, now it's time to fill in and clean up the edges a little bit. Anywhere where I want some more blue or I want the edges to look blended, I'm simply putting it on there but I noticed a big problem as I was doing this up near the top. I didn't leave enough room for the blue at the top so that I could get in there with the cosmetic sponge without covering up my tower tops. So what am I doing? I'm simply putting the mask right back on top of it and then going and adding more of that blue paint up there. It's one of the great things to me about masks is you can always put them back on and cover up anything that you need to. We're now at the very hardest part of this page, and that's because I decided I was going to use a piece of this ephemera. It's simply a piece of Dresden. It's embossed gold foil papery kind of stuff. You'd think it was made out of platinum or it was from another world the way I treat this stuff. I love it and I treasure it and I have it in a drawer. So for this page, I thought, no, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to use it. And this was a lot harder than I even want to admit to start using up some of those things that I've hoarded and treasured. But there was a problem with this, and that is that it's gold. Most Dresden is gold or silver. And I really wanted something that was a bright orange to match the page. So I found a way to change the color of it. I'm using Marabou's Aqua Ink, and I'm brushing a wonderful, generous layer of it on here. And you'll see how it's turning orange, but you can still see the shininess of the gold underneath it. That's what I was looking for with this. Aqua inks are a watercolor ink, and that's why it's allowing some of that gold to shimmer through that. You still have the orange, but you also have that gold of the Dresden too. And that gives it a little more of a luminous look to it. That's gonna take it a little bit to dry. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna get some journaling here on the page. The white pen that I'm using, it's not working at 100% for me. Sometimes it writes well and sometimes it's not. And that's not a problem with the pen and it's not a problem with me. It's a problem or it has to do with the paint that's actually on this page. Now before I talk about that, just so you know, if you wanna see how this background was created, I've got that linked for you over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com. There's a link down below for you there. And you can also see the full supply list and all that kind of information over on that post with it too. But the problem with the pen is the paint that's under there. If I have a really matte paint, this pen writes beautifully on it. In fact, most pens write beautifully on it if you've got a very matte paint. Any of the paints that are not matte or anywhere where I've got a little bit of that glitter glue kind of thing going on, the pen does not write easily over that. So that means if you've got a shiny kind of paint, if your paint has a gloss to it, it's going to be harder for pens and things to write on top of it. Now that's not a bad thing, it's just a matter of what happens. So when I'm doing the writing up here on top of the white and the orange up there, that's a glossier paint. So the pen is having a hard time writing on that, but what that does is gives it a very different look than say where it was writing well. And I love having that variety in the look without me having to do anything differently. Impatient Me wants to get that Dresden glued on there to make that final commitment with it, even though it's not completely and totally dry. So that's why I'm gonna try and handle it on the edges gently as I'm adding the gel medium to it. Now I don't have to get the gel medium everywhere just in enough spots that it's gonna hold it in place. But I also wanna make sure that I've got enough gel medium in those places because this is an embossed item, which means it's not gonna lay perfectly flat on the page. I'm not gonna have lots of good contact. So that's why I wanna make sure I've got enough glue there that it can grab onto the Dresden and grab onto the page too. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new video out. Well, thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.